uh, to welcome everybody and say hi, Sam. Hey, everybody. It's great to be here today for this really fantastic uh, Blonding webinar. I've gone over and over and over the slides that have been presented or, or put together by mainly uh, Gary Call and Michelle Burns, and I am just so enthusiastic about this information. Um, you know, one of the number one things that I've always hoped for was a toxic-free salon environment and the low ammonia odor aspect of our um, permanent color, the color project, is such a powerful and important part of creating a toxic, a non-toxic environment in the salon. So as we go through this today, keep in mind that we're talking about blonde. Blondes tend to uh, gas off more ammonia smell. They tend to send out more of a, a strong, that it takes more uh, intensity to get the color to lift out of the hair and to create the shade. But when using this color, it's amazing how it's so easy on the nose. And that is so important to me personally. And I know it's gotta be important to a lot of you. So I just wanna say welcome to our webinar. I'm, ex I'm greatly excited about being on it with you guys. Thank you for taking the time today, or if you're listening to it this later in the recording. So, Gary, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, Michelle and, and go right to it. Have a great Sam, webinar. please. Uh, called Beautiful Bird. Michelle, are you, we're having a problem with audio, Michelle. Are you having a problem? Can you, can you guys hear me okay? You break out, Michelle. We okay. can now. Okay. I just wanted, before we turn Michelle loose, I just wanted to let you know that Michelle is the vice president or the director of education, and she'll be doing the majority of the presentation. I'm going to mute my mic, and I will be answering any technical questions that you type or uh, send to us. So if you have any questions about other information, you're welcome to type your questions, and I'll assist you that way. So, Michelle, the mic is yours. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay right now then? Perfect. Okay, perfect. All right, good. All right, well, anyway, just to set up the class to let you guys know, we're going, this is more of an advanced color class that really piggybacks on a lot of the information that we've shared with you in the past on the toolbox presentation that really gives you all the nuts and bolts of how the color works in a basic way. Um, so we wanted to really focus on blondes as we start working towards the spring and the summer months. Um, and so this advanced class will inspire you to create the most beautiful Bricado Color Project Blondes. We will spend about 90 minutes, could be a little bit more, there's a lot of information on how the Bricado Color Project color system will We're going to walk through single process, high lift blonding, double process, gray coverage, color correction, and a whole lot of other scenarios as well over the next, like I said, 90 minutes or so. Um, before we do that, you know, thanks, Sam. I know I should, probably should have set you up with, with this slide, but as you know, Sam is an award-winning hairdresser and business leader, as well as Sam works and works on the formulation of not only all of our hair care products, but all of our smoothing and color coloring products as well. And then, of course, Sam owns his salon in New York City as well. Um, the unique points of difference of our hair color is, A, it, again, formulated by Sam Bricado. So this is a true hairdresser-driven um, hair color brand. It's brand new, built from the ground up. We didn't just put our name on the label. This was built with tender, loving care um, from the ground up. Um, using German technology, you know, so we wanted to, we wanted a level of performance, but yet it's made here in America. So again, it's a hairdresser driven, we're a hairdresser driven company created by stylists for stylists. Our permanent color, of course, as Sam mentioned, has um, low ammonia odor. So we were able to create an atmosphere where it is much more um, pleasant, both for the salon guest as well as healthier for the salon professional um, when they're actually using hair color, you know, day in and day out. In addition to that, um, our hair color has a conditioning base. So while we're able to impart the color or get the color or the tonal effect that we're looking for, we're also able to condition the hair at the same time so that the hair looks and feels and reacts better to the hair coloring process. We were also able to um, tap into next generation color technology and performance, meaning that we are on the cutting edge as far as 
the type of hair color pigments that we use, which really gives us the predictability. We have a result-driven swatch book. I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Our permanent matches our demi because it was created at the same time and it was designed to match each other. So you can move seamlessly from one system to the other. And then we also provide a, a single inventory option um, as well for those who have less space or are um, inventory concerned, so to speak. Quote from Sam, I believe beautiful, brilliant, luminous color is never an indulgence for your clients. It's essential for looking their best. It also makes them feel beautiful, confident, and fully inspired. That's why I created Ricardo Color Project as a seamless fusion of science with fashion. My permanent and demi color delivers flawless, predictable results. And that is really everything we're going to be talking about um, this afternoon more with the blonde focus, but it's about creating beautiful blondes, getting it right the first time, the hair looking its best, being less invasive on the hair, being able to work and move from, um, as we said, permanent to demi flawlessly, having the results be predictable. Um, that way it ensures much more confidence for you and it enables you to grow your color business a lot faster as well. Some of the items that we have in our Bricado Color Toolbox are we have Bricado Color Permanent, we have Demi, we also have High Lifts, we have seven beautiful High Lift Blondes which we're going to talk about extensively today. We have Intensifiers both in our Permanent and our Demi lines. We also have Powder Lights Blue and Cream Lights which are both two lighteners which I'll also get into and then as I mentioned a few minutes ago the single inventory option. I also touched upon the fact that our color um, was had a conditioning base and this is really what makes up the Bricado moisture rich base of conditioners. Um, both the Bricado permanent and the Demi contain this moisture rich base of essential oils and conditioners which they actually improve the condition of the hair during the coloring process. They're, the color is emulsion based with four different oils comprising over 30 percent of the base which helps with less staining. For those of you who are have been using Bricado Color Project Color for a while, you know that there's less staining to the skin and to the scalp and this is really due in part to the immense amount of conditioning benefits in the color as well. Um, also, you know, we've always been known for beautiful, healthy, shiny hair and we've extended this philosophy into our color and of course our smoothing products. So we're infused with nourishing ingredients <clears throat> that revitalize and condition the hair. <clears throat> the first one is Muro Muro Seed Butter, which is a natural emollient um, that helps leave the hair, that pro promotes hydration in the hair. Macadamia seed oil, which uh, is a botanically derived oil and it helps leave the hair soft and supple. Green tea seed oil, which works as an antioxidant that revitalizes and adds a glossy finish to the hair and palm kernel oil, which is a botanically derived oil that heals um, damaged hair. And by the way, palm kernel oil also has the ability to really attach itself to those damaged sites, thus giving more shine um, as well as more pliability to the hair as well. So not only are we driving pigment into the hair, but we're also driving conditioning benefits into the hair so that the hair feels better. Not only looks better, but it feels better after the coloring process. Our Bricado Color Project Lookbook, um, this was designed to provide the colorist with a result-driven, completely reliable consultation and formulation tool for accurate and predictable results every single time when you're back there formulating. We wanted you to be able to take your lookbook out of the dispensary, out of the back room of your salon, and be able to feel comfortable utilizing it not only as, as I mentioned, a consultation tool trying to get a feel or an idea, you know, for what your guest is looking for, how light they want to go, what's cool, what's warm, and all of that, but this is also a formulation tool for you. All of our swatches are on pigmented hair. They are on the underlying pigment at each level. So, for instance, even though a starting level may vary, the underlying pigment at the level or our desired level remains constant. For instance, if we were going to a level 6, if we were going to a level 6 from a level 4, the underlying pigment 
of a level six would still be red orange. If we were going to a level six from a level five, the underlying pigment of that level six would still be red orange. And even if we were going from a six to a six, that underlying pigment of a six would still be red orange. So what is constant is the underlying pigment, even though our starting point may vary. So for that reason, we design, designed the swatch book to be result driven. All you're looking at all of the color on top of the underlying pigment at each level. So all of the seven, level six swatches are on red orange. All of the level nine swatches are on pale yellow. All of the level five swatches are on red. So that you're seeing the result, thus achieving perfect, accurate, refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. Is a pastel blonde. It's going to become greater as the level becomes darker. And the first number on all of our Bricado Color Project swatches de denote the level. So the, the number before the slash denotes the level. Our tonal series, tone refers to the overall highlight or hue of a color. Um, all of our colors have these color-coded dots next to them, which you know give you both a letter and a number system to describe the tonal series. Because some people are used to using a letter system and some people are used to using a number so we've actually provided both so whichever is easier for you you have have an option but we also if you look at our swatch book have color coded um, the top of each uh, swatch card so that it matches these dots as well so you can move through the swatch book very very easily so again the letters and numbers after the slash identify the tone Here's our Bricado color wheel. And what is interesting about our color wheel is we show you exactly where our colors are placed. The shades are placed on the color wheel to illustrate the exact tonal contribution of each number and or letter, so to speak. We've also placed them on the color wheel to show whether they have more brown or blonde. Um, or and they are pre-blended or if they have less brown or blonde and are more pure tone. For instance, when you look at the top of the color wheel and the yellow dot or the gold, you see right below that 0 slash 3 3 or z and then right to the left of it you see 0 3. 0 3 is our gold stands for gold. 0 slash I should say slash 4 is copper, slash 5 is red slash six and seven are violet, slash eight is violet blue. You can see slash nine, there is more of a blue violet. And then we start with our one, which is blue, and our two, which is more of a green blue based. And zero is natural and it falls right in the center of the color wheel. All of the colors that are closer to that zero, you see all the little circles that are sort of hovering around the zero? have more brown or blonde or are more pure toned because they're found closer to the center of the color wheel. All of the colors on the outside of the color wheel are more pure toned and create less or contain less brown or blonde in them. So for gray coverage, you want to stick closer to the center of the color wheel. For neutralizing or brightening the hair where you're looking for more vibrant tones or the most control, you want to stick to the outside of the color wheel. And as I mentioned, we really only have one, two, well, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, or with the zero, ten true tones. Everything else you see on this um, color wheel is a combination of those ten tones. So it's really been simplified for you to make it really easy, um, again, for you to um, create, create colors. Some of the key, let's talk specifically about um, beautiful Bricado um, blondes. And here are a list of the key influences to create beautiful, brilliant blondes. One is going to be the level of, that you're starting with, texture, percentage of gray. Of course, porosity plays a key role, and I'm going to break down each one of these um, and give you a little bit more information. Tenacity, how well it accepts color, and then keratinization. Here on this um, slide, 
you see our 1 through 10 level system and you also see the contributing or underlying pigment. You'll also you'll notice that it's really important to determine the correct level that you're starting because you need and the way you do that is you use the Bricado Color Project Natural Series card, the very first card in the swatch book, to determine your starting level. When you're lightening or lifting the hair, you must take into con into consideration or into account the underlying pigment because as hair lightens it's going to move through several stages of lift. The amount of change or lift depends on how much pigment is in the hair. So it's very very important to know whether you know where you're starting because you have to accurately get to your ending point and I think whenever there's a corrective color situation or someone does not achieve the lightness that they're looking for especially with blonding a lot of times it's one of two things one is you did not properly identify the starting level the starting level was actually darker than you thought it was and two miss um, not the appropriate type of product was selected trying to get permanent color sometimes to do everything in one step is asking an awful lot um, where there may be other um, options for you that'll get you your results. So again, really identifying your starting level accurately and where you're going and the underlying pigment is the is very very key into achieving the result that you're looking for. Because in your level mel you can it contains melanin. Each of your underlying pigment and your each of the hair contains melanin. Melanin is the pigment responsible for natural color. And there are two types of melanin, which is eumelanin and theomelanin. Eumelanin is the black to deep red pigment that gives hair its dark color. And theomelanin is the red to um, pale yellow pigment that gives hair light, gives light color to the hair. It's usually partially oval in shape and or has a rod shape. Anyway. In dark hair, the concentration of eumelanin is greater and the pigment size is larger. So again, it's going to, there's more to go through and there are bigger um, pigment sizes that we have to get through. So starting at a level three and moving two levels, as opposed to starting at a level six and moving two levels, are two totally different scenarios. In light hair, the concentration of eumelanin is less and the pigment size is smaller. And again, pigment is melanin is the pigment um, responsible for natural hair color so again if more melanin is present the hair is darker if less melanin is present the hair is lighter and there are three major factors that determine all natural hair colors and one we're going to talk about in just a second is the thickness or the diameter of hair two is the total number of size or pigment granules and three is the ratio of eumelanin and pheomelanin. Let's talk a little bit about texture. Texture refers to the diameter of the hair shaft and it can be divided into three main classifications. You have coarse, you have medium, and you have fine hair. The thicker the diameter of hair, like you see there on the left, the more melanin. The finer the hair, like you see on the right, the less melanin that's going to fill up that hair strand. So fine hair lightens quickly and usually appears more translucent. Coarse hair, super thick coarse hair, is usually more difficult to lighten and the final color can appear deeper and richer. So texture plays just as important a role as does starting level. So always make sure that when you're in your analysis and your consultation, that you're not only analyzing properly your exact starting level and not guessing, but you're also analyzing the texture of hair because of the importance that it plays in your formulation process. Gray hair um, is basically, as we get older, our bodies produce less melanin. And gray hair is a combination of pigmented and unpigmented hair. White hair is usually void of melanin, where gray hair, as I said, is a combination of the two. It has less pigmented hair, it's a combination of, you know, it's, it's got less pigmented than pigmented hair, but there's still pigment in the hair. Have you ever taken somebody with what you thought was gray hair and you put a lightener on them or you put a lighter permanent color, any type of color that oxidized, and the hair became very warm? You're like, wait a minute, it looked very cool because it was gray. Well, that gray hair 
still had a combination of pigmented and unpigmented um, color in the hair and so once oxidation occurred it still um, you know became warm just like pigmented hair would so you want to be sure that you're truly identifying whether the hair is gray and play a factor whether it has pigmented and a combination or if it's white and it's void of melanin so again proper analysis will help you um, achieving the results that you're looking for porosity is the hair's ability to absorb moisture and non-porous hair has more difficulty in accepting color molecules and sometimes can resist the color process. More porous hair is easier to lighten and accepts color faster. Um, hair is typically more porous on the ends and the mid shaft than at the root area and this, this of course is due to many factors. Um, one reason could be overexposure to the sun and other environmental factors, overprocessing due to chemical services like color, bleach, perms, relaxers, um, excessive thermal abuse of blow dryers, curling irons or flat irons and other heat implements. So porosity definitely plays a big role um, in your formulation process as well. And then of course we have tenacity and tenacity really refers to the ease or difficulty uh, that the cuticle can be penetrated. And hair with a glassy feel or appearance has a very tight cuticle and it doesn't matter whether the hair is actually fine, medium, or coarse, or whether the hair is dark or light. It can be more difficult to color. And this is why sometimes we have to um, raise the um, ammonia content or raise the alkalinity to really boost um, the action of the color to lift the cuticle on hair that tends to be more tenacious. Keratinization. Um, this is the process of protein hardening as it's exposed to oxygen over a period of time. You always want to take in consideration that the hair next to the scalp is always going to be less keratinized than, than the mid shaft in the ends. This is why you get hot roots um, often because the hair is less keratinized. You put the color right on that new hair um, com combined with the heat from the scalp and boom you get either a lighter root area or you get warmer root area than you were looking for. So you always want to be sure that you're formulating for this situation as well. So those are just some of the key influences that really drive and help us in our formulation process. Now we're going to really talk about um, some of the different systems and who are the best candidates and where you should use permanent color, who's a good candidate for double process or uh, not double, yeah, double process, or who's a candidate for high lift and, and that kind of thing. But, you know, everyone has a different perception of what a perfect blonde is and what it should look like. Um, and this is the one cate color category where choosing the right candidate is absolutely essential in achieving success. So you want to choose the right candidate and, of course, the right tool for that candidate for what they're looking for. So let's talk about the best single process blonde candidate. And I know, and you can look here, that basically your blonde levels are levels 10 through 6. You've got dark blonde at a level 6, 7 is a medium blonde, 8 is light blonde, 9 is very light blonde, and 10 is the lightest blonde. So when you look at these, you know, obviously they all have the word blonde in their natural hair color description. However, the best blonde candidates for single process blonding usually fall at your levels 7 and 8. And I will make an exception for a fine level 6. Your worst blonde candidates are levels 1 through 6. And that is because if you look at levels 1 through 6, you can see that they contain orange or red. And so therefore, they don't, they're a little harder for us to get a cool or natural or neutral result in single process because we're not only having to lift but overcome so much amount of that underlying or contributing pigment. It can be done of course and I know you guys have done it but the best candidates are going to be your level 7 and 8 fine level 6 worst candidate is going to be your levels 1 through 6. There are essentially five things that we're doing when we're coloring hair and we're exposing underlying pigment. The first thing, and, and the first thing that you're going to do or can do is balance. And balance 
when you're creating formulas, your, your five options are one balance, and balance is when you choose a shade in the same color family on the same side of the color wheel. For instance, if you are lifting a level six to a level seven, and you can see here on a level seven, the underlying pigment of a level seven is gold. So if you wanted to balance, all you would need to do is choose a shade that has that is a gold. You could use a, a slash three or a gold based color. You could use um, a BG. You, know, you just want to stay, just choose a shade in the same color family on the same side of the color wheel. The second thing that you can do is soften, and that is choose a shade closer. And you basically go and move closer to the center of the color wheel. On the Bricado color wheel, remember I showed you a few minutes ago that everything closer to the center has more brown or blonde, and everything on the outside of the color wheel has less brown or blonde. So if you just move just a little bit closer to the center, like say a BG, um, that will be, or a GB, that will give you a golden beige which will give you still some gold but yet you have some violet in there from the beige which neutralizes and softens the tone just a little bit. The third thing that you can do is enhance and that's choose a shade that's in the same um, color family as the underlying pigment or brighter. So to um, enhance A level six with the gold orange underlying tone and that would actually enhance so soft you know move to the side of the color wheel and brighten control is to move across the color wheel and use the complementary color Bus control. And if we want to do the fifth op option is overcome, we would actually do just like we would with control, but we would use, which is using the complementary color, but we would increase our volume of developer. So normally, if we're moving two levels, we would use 20 volume and we would use a blue violet base color help to control. But if we want to overcome, we would increase our developer to 30 volume and still use that blue violet color at a level six and that will help us overcome. So those are the five things basically that we're doing on a daily basis with our color formulations. Here are some of the again best single process blonde candidates, some of the different tonal families that we have, what they look like, what who their best um, used for and the different types of things that you know the different reasons you would use them the first one is natural blondes and your natural is a great way to balance or soften remember we were talking about the five different things you can do and your natural or your N series or your zero base shade will help subdue some unwanted warm tones may appear a little bit deeper and will usually appear tan or taupe so that's how you create a natural blonde Warm blondes, you would actually soften or enhance. So you could go with a golden or a warm blonde. So that would be your gold or your three series, your golden beige, as I mentioned, which is your three six, or the brown gold, which is a slash seven three. This way, you're taking advantage of the underlying pigment that's in the hair, but yet you're moving a little bit closer into this color wheel, so you're still softening it a little bit with tonality. The next thing that you can do is with red blondes, and that really is to enhance. And red based blondes are strawberry blondes, copper blondes, apricots, and these can actually be used on unpigmented hair and darker levels with like a five or a six without looking brassy as well. Um, they enhance or slightly soften to create more warmth. And again, you're taking advantage of the natural underlying pigment 
produced in the lifting process and the suggested Ricardo color project shades are copper gold which is a slash 43 copper which is a 4 copper brown slash 47 copper copper which is very bright and intense a beautiful um, uh, Irish settery copper blonde uh, slash 44 copper red slash 45 and copper violet slash 46 then of course we have our single process cool blondes and the trick here is to control and overcome and control means to neutralize the underlying pigment by using as I mentioned before and pigment that's in the hair so your ideal choices are ash or slash one which is a blue base and this is really the single most used single process blonde shade that um, we have. Um, ash or blue base will subdue or neutralize warm, orange, or brassy tones at a level 7, and it will create very cool results on a level 8 or lighter. Um, it will not cover gray or unpigmented hair on its own, so it must be mixed with the corresponding N or zero series for gray coverage in the proper increments depending on how much gray is in the hair so make sure that you understand that the, the ash base and even the violet which is a slash six um, are both excellent for controlling warmth but used not recommended to be used alone on gray or unpigmented hair so how does permanent color work very simply you're going to mix one part Ricardo permanent with one part of rich cream developer your developer will be determined by the desired amount of lift we recommend we highly recommend a scale for accurate measuring and a bowl and brush application because of the conditioning base of our color and the conditioning base really of our developer as well you're going to have a more uh, cream um, based application so you want to make sure that you're using enough product that you're completely um, applying it and saturating the hair and a bowl and brush application and using a scale for measuring is your best bet there um, processing time um, is 30 minutes uh, to 45 minutes depending on um, whether you're dealing with gray coverage or not um, as far as our developers, each developer works a little bit differently. Your formulation with 10 volume, 10 volume will provide up to one level of lift. It exposes some gold or orange pigment. It's really used more for gray blending or breaking the base. And also we use when we're staying close to um, the natural level. So if you're really just looking to break the base or you're, excuse me, looking to uh, just pop the hair up just one level, 10 volume is a great choice for that. 20 volume um, will provide one to two levels of lift. It will expose more contributing pigment of gold, gold orange, red orange underlying pigments. And 20 volume is really best for gray coverage. So whenever you're dealing with lifting and gray coverage, 20 volume is your best bet. So when you're looking for one to up to one to two levels of lift, you're going to use 20 volume. 30 and, four vo 30 and 40 volume are going to provide three to four levels of lift. It's going to expose more contributing pigment of gold, gold orange, orange, and red orange. Um, you can use the 40 volume or the 30 volume to overcome, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago. We also use 30 and 40 volume on the mid shaft and ends, especially when we're taking somebody from a previous diff or a different color brand and ricottoizing them so to speak we will do 20 volume at the root area and 30 or 40 volume on the ends that very first time we color their hair just to pop off some of that old color and then of course we we tone it um, the second time with our as I mentioned it and that we use with our high lift blonde series that we're going to talk about in just a second as well we also have five intensifiers um, that are designed to be mixed with the Bricado color project permanent we have demi too and I'll talk about those a little bit later but these
Um, um, they're designed to be pure toned for ultimate creativity and versatility. So you really have control if you want to add much more copper, more red, more violet, gold, or you're looking to drab out a color with the 011 blue base. You really can control exactly what you're doing. Um, they may be mixed with developer and used alone on blonde or pre-lightened hair. Remember, they do contain some ammonia. The demi intensifiers are really your best bet on pre-lightened hair, but, it, but these can be used as well. Also, you can add up to one half ounce or 15 milliliters to your two ounce mixed color without adding additional developer. Blue is a very cool blue tone that will deepen the final perceived result. Remember, anything that is a drabber will look a little bit cooler, but if you have someone that has a high level of gold or orange in their hair and you're really looking to tone that down, um, the blue will, will be your best friend. Um, gold, which is 033, is a very bright warm tone and it, it lightens and brightens the final result. Um, it can also improve the gray blending. Copper, or 044, is a very bright red orange tone and will add intensity and brightness to your formula. Red 055 is a very strong red tone and will dramatically brighten the final formula. And violet, which is slash 66, is a cool violet tone that will control warmth and add coolness to your final result. So that was um, permanent color or, you know, your regular permanent color. Our next thing we're going to talk about is creating beautiful high lift blondes. And high lift blonding um, at, will lighten the hair and deposit tone, you know, all in one step. It can lift up to three to four levels. So again, who are your best blonde candidates for high lift blonding? Your best high lift blonde candidate is a level 10 to a level 6, again, fine level 6. Your worst high lift blonde candidates, doesn't mean you can't use it on them, um, is a level 1 through 6, or coarse level 6. Remember I was saying earlier that um, the texture of the hair, being coarse or fine, plays a big role. Our level, so I'm going to use a high lift blonde, and she's a really coarse, this thick textured hair, and she ends up with, you know, some yellow or gold tones in her hair, and we're like, wait a minute, how did that happen? Well, 99.9% .9 of the time, as I mentioned, it's due in part to the texture of the hair. So properly identifying where you're starting is, is very, very important um, because, you know, coarser hair has much more pigment that you need to work through. Um, to get to your desired result. So it's not that you cannot put it on a level 6 course or a level 5 hair, but just be aware that you are going to have some warmth. You can formulate accordingly or you know, or um, you can uh, add some other types of um, techniques after the fact to uh, achieve the result you're looking for. So uh, when, again, when you look at the natural hair colors and their underlying pigment, you see that 7 and 10 have gold and yellow, where 1 and 6 you see red and orange. In addition to the starting level and underlying pigment, again, the texture of the hair is important because the thicker the diameter of the hair, the more melanin. Fine hair lightens quickly and appears more translucent. Coarse hair is more difficult to lighten, and the final um, color will appear deeper and richer. So this really does create that break point between a fine level 6 and a coarse level six. It also means that if you try to make a high lift blonde out of any one that is a natural um, five or darker, you're going to get very warm tones and produce an orange or brassy blonde. These guests are not good candidates for high lift blonding, but it doesn't mean that those guests can't be blonde. They could be a warm single process or high lift blonde, so if you don't mind the warmth that's in the hair, that's fine. Or you can actually diffuse it with highlights. So you can go back over your color once you've lifted and then go back over with highlights to break up or diffuse the warm tones. Or of course, I'm gonna, as I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, a double process blonde might be your best choice. So again, level 7 and 8 are your best high lift candidates and will become your most successful Fricado blondes. 
some things to keep in mind as far as the High Lift Blonde series, and one is that it was designed for all over blonding or highlighting. So uh, you're going to mix it. I, you, you do mix it with, with double your developer. So you either mix it with two parts 30 or two parts 40. But it's designed to either go from, you know, do an all over blonding technique or you can use it for highlighting. The best candidate, as I mentioned, is a level six or lighter for optimum results. Anything darker than a level six is going to either require to be pre-lightened or you could do some highlights over. Additionally, it's not recommended for hair that is more than 25% gray if you're looking for maximum gray coverage. If you're looking to diffuse or blend the gray, that's fine. But if you're looking for coverage or a solid color, then um, you're going to need to formulate for gray coverage, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And it's also not recommended to be pulled or to be used through previously lightened hair. The High Lift Blonde series actually contains two times the amount of pigment in the tube because we're de it's designed to lift and tone in one step. It's also designed to be blended or to be mixed with twice the amount of developer. So therefore, the pigment concentration has been increased. If you pull that through previously lightened hair, you could end up with drabber ends than you are looking for. So always remember that you're applying it only to the new growth or to new hair that you're lifting. If you need to tone the hair, you want to go in with a Bricado Demi. So Bricado High Lip Blondes are denoted with the number 11. They are available in seven tones. They provide up to three to four levels of lift in one step. As I mentioned, they are mixed with two parts 30 or 40 rich cream developer. The process time is 45 to 60 minutes, and it is recommended that you color balance the ends with Bricado Color Project. Um, demi color. Here are the seven shades to give you a little idea of what they do. They are listed from cooler to warmer. You've got 11-2 or what we call 11 matte. It's a platinum matte blonde. It has a blue green base. 11-1 which is a platinum ash blonde, platinum ash blonde which has a blue base. 11-9 has a violet blue base. 11-6 or 11-V has a violet base. 11-0 or 11 natural is going to have a neutral base. 11-7, which is 11 BG, is a beigey blonde, so it's a natural gold base. And then, of course, 11-3 is going to be warmer, and it's your gold-based color. So, again, these are listed from the most amount of control or cooler to warmer. Here's the High Lift Blonde Series usage chart, and you can see, you know, for level 6, Dark Blonde, the recommended, is really sticking to the first couple of shades that I mentioned, which is the 11, 2, 6, 9, and 1. Medium Blonde at a level 7, and then Light Blonde at a level 8. So this chart is very helpful in helping you determine which are the best choices for, you know, for the level and the underlying pigment that you're dealing with. Again, um, you're going to mix one part Bricado High Lift Blonde to two parts 30 volume. Processing time 45 to 60 minutes for three levels of lift. One part Bricado High Lift Blonde to two parts 40 volume. Again, same processing time, 45 to 60 minutes for four levels of lift. And I just want to say that the processing time, as I've mentioned over and over, is very important. I know a lot of times um, when we're lifting, you know, we really just check our foils and when it gets as light as we want it, um, then we take it off. This is not a lightener. This is a color that lifts and deposits color in one step. And you really need the full time to be able to get the true tonal contribution and toning benefits and durability of those toning benefits. So leaving it on the full 45 to 60 minutes will ensure um, the result and the durability of the tonality of the color that you've chosen. High Lift Blonde when you're doing a virgin application, when you're using 30 volume, you, could, you would use Bricado Bricado Color Project High Lift Formula with 30 volume, one half inch from the scalp. Then you would immediately apply with 40 volume because again we're adjusting the developer because we don't have the heat of the scalp or the keratinization to deal with and applying 40 volume from that one, hip inch, one half inch um, to the mid shaft and ends 
and then you process it for 30 to 45 minutes. You're going to emulsify, rinse, um, and condition. When using 40 volume, because there isn't anything higher, you're going to apply the high lift formula mixed with 40 volume to the first half inch, process 10 to 15 minutes, then apply fresh mixture, I'm sorry, apply off scalp for the first 10 to 15 minutes, then apply fresh mixture to the root area, process 20 to 30 minutes at this point, and then emulsify and rinse. So um, still a 45 minute processing, 30 to 45 minute processing time. High Lift Blonde Retouch application, you're going to apply Bricado Color Project High Lift Formula to the new growth only, one half inch or less. Make sure that you refresh your ends with Bricado Color Project Demi. If the regrowth is more than one half an inch, which does happen sometimes, a virgin application may be needed for that new growth area. So if you have two inches of regrowth area and the rest is you know, light or high lift blonde, you're going to treat that one half inch as, you're going to treat that the two inches as if it were a virgin application. So you're going to color the one half inch and then you're going to color the other inch and a half with, with the alternate um, developer. So make sure that you're properly doing that. It makes a big difference and it help, it will keep you from getting those gold bands as well as uneven lift. So make sure you're always taking it into consideration. One half inch is a retouch. Anything more than one half inch, and this is with any, anything, regardless of whether it's high lift, regular blonde series, bleach, what have you, more than one half inch, you have to apply it like it's a virgin application. So some high lift blonding tips that are, are that I find very helpful and useful are Process again the full 45 to 60 minutes. I think I've said that like eight times. It's not recommended to be used as a toner on previously lightened or bleached hair. Make sure you color balance the ends with Bricado Color Project Demi. If you have or you are looking for gray coverage or blending, you want to mix with 9 slash 0 or 10 slash 0 in proper proportions. So it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for complete gray coverage, then you want to make sure you're dropping down to 9-0 and you're mixing it with your high lift blonde in the proper proportions as we're going to cover in, in gray coverage. Also, apply to fine hair around the face and nape last. This hair, because it's the texture of it is a finer diameter, it has less pigment. So it will lift and lighten and actually take or absorb the color a lot quicker. So you want to apply to the fine hair around the face and the nape last. And lastly, make sure you add thickener to your mixed color formulation if you want to use it for highlighting and other special effects. The thickener makes a big difference. Um, ah, I'm going to talk about it in just a second. The thickener makes a big difference in the viscosity when you're putting um, the high lift blondes in foil, especially you know when you're using double um, developer. It can be you know a little bit loose, and you really want it to stick to the hair, and you really want those foils to stay in. And so I'll, I'm going to talk about um, thickener in just a second. So again, some high lift blonding tips for highlighting. The first one is do not overlap onto previously lightened hair. I suggest processing at room temperature. If you place it under a dryer, the dryer should be warm, not hot. This is not about cooking the foils. If you make it too hot, it's going to cause the foils to slip and, and possibly cause the product to expand a little bit. So you don't want that to happen because then, and, it's, and the heat is not necessary. So if you're going to use heat, either use a warm dryer, a rollerball, a steamer, or mister, but it does not need to be hot. Also, add thickener to mix color formulas for your special effects. You can use one to five drops. Here is the Bricado Hair Color Thickener, and what it does is you can use it with permanent and demi color. You can use it with high lift, so you can really use it with just about anything. Um, it's ideal for using it, you know, with foils um, whenever you're using hair color. But it allows you to adjust the fluidity of Bricado Color Project permanent and demi color. It allows for perfect placement by preventing bleeding. So after mixing your color, you can add anywhere from one to five drops and stir thoroughly. 
you can add a little bit more if desired to increase your viscosity. But I always start off with one to five drops, mix it up, check the thickness or the viscosity that I'm looking for, and then I may add a couple of more drops um, at that point if needed. Okay, let's talk about creating beautiful double process blondes. And this is the color category that most stylists like to avoid. Um, you know, either because, you know, single process blonding, you know, it's quicker, or, you know, try to get the hair to do something with a high lip blonde, um, knowing that it's going to have some warmth to it. Um, you know, it really doesn't take any more time off your schedule, although it does take, you know, more time. Um, and, but it, but it, what it does is it guarantees an accurate reblond result on your levels three through seven. Here are some famous double process blondes. You have Carrie Underwood, Gwen Stefani, um, Britney Spears, Gwyneth Paltrow, Marilyn Monroe. They're all double process blondes, every single one of them. And your best double process blonde candidate is really anyone that is a level three through seven. Um, one, guests that are natural level seven or darker, which is three through seven, that are looking for cooler toned blonde results are an excellent candidate. Um, Bricado powder lights will lift seven to ten levels. So re remember, of course, that your starting level, texture, percentage of gray, um, porosity, tenacity, and keratinization all play a key role in the lifting process. And then, of course, you have guests with previously colored hair that are looking to go lighter. Um, color will not lift color predictably. Um, and so lightener will provide the lift you need to move to a lighter level more accurately. Keys to successful double process blonding. One is always be sure, and this is really for any type of blonding, but definitely double process, is make sure that you determine your starting level and texture, because it will determine the volume of the Bricado Rich Cream Developer and whether a double process application uh, might be needed in the first place. The percentage of gray will either work in your favor or against you. Remember to always accurately determine the percentage of gray. Porous hair will react quicker to lightener than non-porous or healthy hair. And then remember keratinization. It's important because the hair closest to the scalp will lighten more quickly. So be sure the regrowth is no more than one half inch. If it is, you'll need two formulas. So again, some keys to double process blonding. Decolorizers or lighteners. Um, what lighteners are chemical compounds that lighten the hair by diffusing, dispersing, dissolving, and decolorizing the natural hair pigment. Lifting the hair to the appropriate level is the single most Air is not lift too much or too little warmth, underlying pigment will alter the final result. So you want to make sure, and if you look at this picture, you can see on the left where you've inside the cortex um, the pigment that's been removed at a red-orange stage, at a gold stage, and at a pale yellow stage because it's making room for this new pigment. So you want to be sure that you're pulling up to the appropriate pigment so that or the appropriate level so that you can then tone with the level um, that you've chosen in the first place. Here are some of the Ricardo tools that we have to um, get us to, you know, to, to, to pre-lightening the hair. The, the first item is Ricardo Color Project's Cream Lights, which is a conditioning lightener. And this was actually designed specifically for free-handed lightening techniques. It comes in a seven ounce tube. Again, it's mixed with two parts, rich cream developer, um, it's used for on or off the scalp. It's extra thick, so you can put it where you want it. It's perf you know, perfect placement. You can balayage or, or you can paint it into the hair. It will not run or imprint on surrounding hair. It also contains essential oils that help protect the condition of the hair during the lightening process. It will lift two to five levels. So if you're looking to use this as an excellent corrective color, um, product. It's also great for balayage. Um, it's, good for, it's good for foils, but the hair will definitely stick to the foil. But any type of free-handed free lightening technique. It will work up to 60 minutes 
So if after 60 minutes you have not achieved the lightness you're looking for, you need to reapply. And because of the essential oils, you, Cream Lights needs to be gently shampooed from the hair after the processing is complete. So you don't just rinse it out like you do with our hair color. You're going to want to shampoo, rinse, shampoo, and then follow up with your toner if you need one or your Bricado Color Shampoo. So that is Cream Lights. Then we also have Bricado Color Project Powder Lights, which is a gentle blue lightener. And this is an all-purpose lightener. It's great for all techniques. Uh, again, you can use it on or off the scalp. does contain replenishing oils um, like cream lights, but it also contains collagen, which again helps protect the hair during the lifting process. It does have a blue base and that helps control warmth or brassiness in the hair. It is also mixed with two parts rich cream developer. On the scalp, 10 or 20. Off the scalp, it, it's 10, 20, 30, or 40. Now, powder lights will give you five to seven levels of lift. So if you're really looking for double process blonding and taking somebody from that level four to a 10, you know, the powder lights is really where you want to be. And again, it works up to 60 minutes. So after one hour, you're going to want to rinse, shampoo, and reapply the mixture. Some application techniques. Virgin application, you just basically need to apply Bricado Color Project Powder Lights or Cream Lights mixed with 10 or 20 volume. Remember, we're only using 10 or 20 volume. This is for a virgin on the scalp application. And you're going to apply it from scalp to ends. When the root area becomes a desired pre-lightened level, you rinse, shampoo, and then you reapply to just the mid shaft and the ends. Process until it matches the re regrowth area. And again, because fine hair around the face and the nape area lighten quickly, you want to apply to the fine hair around the face and nape last. Retouch application, again, one half inch. If it's more than that, you have to do somewhat of a virgin application again. But your retouch should be one half inch or less. Again, you're going to apply your Bricado Color Project cream lights or powder lights to new growth only. Be very careful not to overlap onto previously lightened hair. Process until the desired level has been achieved. Rinse and then shampoo and follow up with your toner or your Bricado Color Project um, color shampoo. Now, here's a tricky one, which is lightener application on previously colored hair. And again, um, your lightener is really going to be your best choice because it has the ability to completely eradicate those color molecules. So we don't have a color remover or anything like that. We feel very comfortable with using either one of our lighteners because of the conditioning benefits in both products. So we apply Bricado Color Projects Powder Lights again or Cream Lights mixed with 10 or 20 from scalp to ends. When the root area again becomes the desired pre-lightened level, we rinse, shampoo, towel dry, and then reapply to the mid shaft in the ends, allow the mid shaft in the ends to process until it matches the root area. Sometimes with previously colored hair, you could have someone who has, I mean, you, and you know, they've, they've had four or five different types of color on their hair. They could have been to four or five different salons, who knows. So by doing the very first application with 10 or 20 from scalp to ends, that's the easiest way to really expose whether you're going to have bands or any issues. So this way it uncovers everything. And oftentimes what you'll find is your regrowth will lift, even though it might have color or not, it'll lift right where you want it to, and then you can see clearly where you need to go back and apply more color. Sometimes you'll have ends which are darker to the mid shaft. So you can actually go back there and adjust, apply to the mid shaft and ends, and then work your way up to the root area as far as timing if you need to. But putting it on from scalp to ends that first time really does help uncover you know, what's going on underneath that color that you just can't see, especially when there's a dark color on there. So really helps with, with that. Um, lightener retouch application on previously light highlighted hair. Now this is not something that we're going to do really often, but every once in a while we'll have someone that comes in with highlighted hair and they 
you know, they want to be all over blonde. And right now, being all over platinum blonde is a fashion choice. And highlights are really less of a fashion choice right now. So the following method is ideal when taking a guest with heavy highlights to an all over double process blonde. And um, you know, this, this actually applies to guests that are moderate to heavily highlighted um, with bleach. And what you're going to do is you're going to apply Bricado Color Project Powder Lights or Cream Lights with the appropriate volume of Rich Cream Developer to the new growth only. Process to desired level and then you're going to rinse. Then you're going to follow up of course with Vibracolor Shampoo and Treatment and dry under a cool dryer. Then you're going to go back and weave out the dark hair and apply Bricado Color Project Powder Lights or Cream Lights with the appropriate volume of Rich Cream Developer in foils to the dark hair that's left. Process until the hair and the foils match the root area, then remove the foils and rinse. So you got to try really hard, you know, to stay away from that previously lightened hair, but it, it certainly can be done. I've done it. Once you've rinsed, the, the hair's been processed, and you've removed the foils, and you've rinsed, then you want to gently massage a Bricado Gentle bleach wash formula, which is one part water, one part shampoo, and one part powder lights, gently through the entire head for one to twelve, excuse me, one to two minutes to lift and freshen those old highlights. Again, rinse, follow with Bricado Vibracolor Shampoo and Treatment, dry with cool temperature dryer or blow dryer or hood dryer um, to check the overall evenness before toning. So this is a way that you know you can it's a little bit more intricate and involved but it can be done. So you basically lift the root area, go back and weave out the dark, do a bleach wash over top and then dry it to check before toning. That way if you have any dark pieces that you need to lighten you can get in there and, and do that. So this is with permanent um, color. So some double process um, blonding tips. One always measure your bleach mixture. Ricardo Color Project bleaches, both of them, um, especially the powder lights, were designed to be mixed with the Rich Cream Developer. The Rich Cream Developer is a thicker viscosity of developer than most hair colors use. Therefore, it will actually create a nice, soft um, texture whether you use too much or too little. The problem is if you use too much or too little, you know, you can't guarantee or you can't accurately gauge how much lift or how fast that lift is going to happen. So regardless of whether, especially though when you're doing on the scalp, whenever you're touching someone's scalp, make sure that you're mixing to manufacturer's directions. And when you're doing off scalp, make sure that you're mixing as well. I know it's really easy to go back there and dump and pour, you know, to get your thickness or your viscosity when you're highlighting. However, it doesn't take any more time to place the bowl on the scale, add your lightener, and add your developer, and mix it. It takes just a, doesn't take any longer than to put it on the counter than it does to put it on that scale. So please, 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 to get accurate results, always measure your bleach mixture. The finished color result is only as good as the pre-lightening stage. Remember, if you take that lightener off too early or you took it too far, you know, you're going to have to make adjustments. So it's very important that you stay on top of um, the lightening process and make sure you monitor and check it often. Not only check the, the, um, check the processing, but check the processing in multiple areas, the front, to the side, to the, to the back. Recheck and recheck. If after one hour, remember 60 minutes, it stops working, you need to reapply. So make sure that you're you know, if it's been on more than an hour that, that you're taking it off and reapplying. Texture is more important than the volume of developer. What this means is that if you have somebody that has a thicker coarse texture, you may need, it may lift slower even with 30 or 40 volumes. So when you're working with thicker coarser hair that you have to remove more pigment, remember you may need to increase the volume of developer that you're currently working with so that the color will lift evenly. Um, apply to fine hair around face and nape last. I've said that about 10 times, but because of the fine hair around the face and the nape, it will lift 
a lot faster. So make sure that you apply to that area last. Toning. Um, Ricardo Color Project Demi is really the best toning option because it does not lift and it does not contain ammonia. Um, toners should not and do not lift. They are designed to control and refine the final result. Um, process Bricado Demi, if you're using it as your toner, the full time to achieve durable results. If you do not process it the full time, you will still have color contribution. You just won't have the durability. So always make sure to ensure um, the long lasting effect of your color that you've done on your guests that day that you, you leave it on the full time. You do not have to worry about Bricado Demi going darker or turning off tone or anything like that. So, um, you know, please feel confident that you can leave it on the full time. Get the result that you're looking for and the durability that, that you need. And again, follow up with Bricado Color Refresher for at home use. Um, most toners are not, you know, you know they're going to last because you've lifted from the hair. You know, they could last anywhere from three to four weeks. So, um, if you're looking for on, say, highlighted hair or during the summertime, you know, really using a Bricado Color Refresher for at home use just ensures the tonality of the color, both, um, you know, at home and then because of the environmental um, issues that can, that can lighten the hair as well. So, here are our Bricado um, Color Project Demi Shears. And I'm going to talk in de depth about Demi in a few minutes, but our Bricado Shears, this is what they were designed for. They're five super sheer shades. They have 50% less intensity, so they're, you know, they're going to be more translucent for you. They make an excellent toner or gloss. They can be mixed with other Demi shades, though. But what you have are S9 and B. Um, S, because there's a, it means sheer, 937, which is a golden beige, and S103, which is a gold, S10, which is more of a natural or neutral, and then 1034, which is a golden copper. So if you're looking for kind of an apricot type of toner, um, your 10, your S10 GC would be ideal for that. Some different blonding techniques, and we are actually going to have um, a webinar next month uh, where we go into a little bit more, that's a little bit more technique driven. This has been more informational driven, and we're still not finished. We have about 20 more minutes worth of information. Um, but we're going to have more of a technique-driven webinar um, in April, so look for your invitation um, for that. But we have classes as well within our distributorships on foil highlighting, balayage, and ombre techniques. Okay, let's talk a little bit about gray coverage. We, we touched on it a little bit earlier in the beginning, but we'll spend just a little bit more time on gray coverage, and then we'll work on some demi information and then troubleshooting, really. And so, again, as we get older, our bodies produce less melanin, and gray hair is a combination of pigmented and unpigmented hair, where white hair is void of melanin. Some gray coverage guidelines, you just always remember that you want to use as much natural in your formulation as um, you have gray. There's ways to do gray blending, there's gray coverage, there's gray reduction, and then we also have a way um, that you can do resistant gray coverage that I'm going to cover all of this here in just a second. Again, your gray coverage formulation, up to 25% gray, 0 to 25% gray, you can use 2 ounces of whatever your Bricado permanent color with equal parts of rich cream developer, and that's your formula. We made this really simple for you guys. If, it's tw if the hair is 25 to 75% gray, then you're going to use equal parts color and the natural series and two ounces of rich cream developer. If there's 75 or more, 75 to 100% gray, a half ounce of permanent color to one and a half ounce of the natural series and two ounces of rich cream developer. And then we'll talk more about this resistant double pigmented formula in just a second. So our recommendation is to use these percentages and you won't have any trouble with your gray coverage and your, this is based on a two ounce, uh, excuse me, a four ounce mixed colored formula. So let's talk a little bit about gray blending because not everybody wants their gray covered. I mean, I know most people do, but not everybody does. And sometimes, you know, especially with blonde hair and natural blondes, they're looking more for gray blending because it, the gray in their hair actually makes their hair look highlighted. 
So I have found that most blondes aren't looking for a solid color. Redheads and brunettes are looking for more solid, but blondes aren't necessarily all of the time. So gray blending, it'll cover or blend most of the gray. You're going to basically use an all over applique color application and you can use a Bricado Color Project Demi Shade in the level 8 or 9. This way, regardless of whether their hair is a 6, 7, 8, or 9, usually it's a 6, 7, or 8, this 8 or 9 will still keep that little bit of dimension in their hair, although it'll soften the tonality of that gray or that white hair. You can add intensity diluter or choose a demi sheer shade if you're looking for even more translucency. Gray reduction. Um, if you're looking to reduce the amount of gray and again not cover it up, you can use a low lighting technique. Uh, so you want to choose a Bricado Color Project Demi or you could use permanent with 10 volume that matches the natural color or is slightly lower, lighter. And the low light can be heavy and obvious. You know, some people like it to be heavy and obvious and some people like it light and soft. So again, this is another way that you can minimize the gray without covering. Then we get into single process gray coverage. And for the best single process gray coverage, you want to use 20 volume. You also want to stay within two levels of the natural. Again, as I mentioned earlier, extend the processing time to the full 45 minutes or 30 minutes with heat. And again, this is medium to light heat, not hot, or a rollerball, steamer, mister, climatron, that kind of thing. Also use a brush application working across the hair shaft and then Bricado Color Project High Lip Blondes are not recommended on hair that's over 25% unpigmented, so don't forget that. High Lift Gray Coverage, again, as I just mentioned, if, 25, if it's 25% more um, unpigmented, 25% or more unpigmented and maximum gray coverage is desired, High Lift Blonde, you're going to want to mix it with either 9-0 or 10-0 in the proper proportions. So if they are 25% or less, then you would simply use your high lift blonde formula with double parts 30 or 40 and process as normal. From 25 to 50% unpigmented or 25 to 75% unpigmented, you would use equal parts of your high lift color mixed with your 9-0 with your proper proportions of double 30 or double 40 and process that up 45 minutes to one hour. Then you want to, if you have more than 100% gray, um, you want to use one half ounce of your high lift. You're going to use an ounce and a half of nine or 10 zero and then you're going to use your developer in proper proportions. So again, you're still going to follow the rules of gray coverage with um, someone who is more than 25% gray. Double process gray coverage. Remember that gray hair still has gold pigment in the cortex. It may not look like it, but sometimes once you, if you put single process color on that um, gray hair, you know, you find out, oh, it still has a lot of gold in it. So when you're doing a double process, just remember that that gray, pro that gray hair has, has gold as well. Um, bleaching will create porosity and remove um, some or if not all of the gold pigment and toners will only work on hair which has been pre-lightened um, to remove unwanted natural pigment. Pre-lighten with Bricado Color Project cream lights or powder lights and then follow with your target Bricado Color Project Demi or permanent shade in 10 volume. For resistant gray coverage, this is evenly dispersed coarse textured resistant gray. You can use the Bricado Color Project double pigmented formula. And what we did was rather than create a double N, you can double pigment any color. So this gives you much more creativity. All of your resistant gray coverage guests do not need to be brown. They can be whatever their normal formula was. The key is most people don't need this double pigmented formula all over. They only need it in the areas where they're resistant, which is usually around the face or in the crown. So you want to mix up your formula for that area only and you're going to use two parts of Color Project Permanent, whatever the formula is, and one part 30 volume rich cream developer. And then you're going to apply it to that new growth and process as normal. So again, 
an example would be one ounce of nine zero and two ounces of 30 volume and you would apply it just to the root area where that dis dispersed coarse textured gray is and process up to 45 minutes. For patchy coarse textured resistant gray spots which sometimes you'll find in the temple or the fringe area you can use what we call a pre-pigmented formula and this is to apply your desired level of Bricado Color Project Permanent Natural straight to that patch or unpigmented area allow it to process 10 to 15 minutes and then put your desired formula over that patch and all the remaining hair and process 30 to 45 minutes so if you just have patches you can pre-treat or pre-pigment those formula that those areas and then color as normal the rest of the hair so those were some really quick gray coverage techniques um, for blonde hair let's talk about Bricado Demi because sometimes you have guests that come in that you know really aren't looking to lift they're just looking to change the tonality or maybe even deepen I know sounds crazy but they may be able they're maybe looking to deepen or soften their blonde shade they're already blonde they just want a little bit of a change of tonality so your best candidates would be your levels 7 through 10 because they're already blonde um, Bricado Color Project is ammonia free contains amino methylpropanol which is the um, ingredient that helps you know, drive it and give it long-lasting durability it has zero lift blends gray non-progressive as I mentioned prevents damage and leaves the hair detangled and smooth this is why this makes not only is it good for covering you know or changing the tone of the hair when it's natural but it, it also makes the ideal toner and then the demi matches the permanent here's a list of some of the Bricado tonal effects and um, what each of the tones do mixing instructions you want to mix equal parts of Bricado color demi color and the demi activating liquid it does have its own designated activator it's mixed equal parts processing time is 20 to 30 minutes we also have a zero zero clear and an intensity diluter the zero zero clear is really just a glaze and color sealer so if you're just looking to add a shine over top of any of your Bricado blondes um, whether it's a finished highlight or whether it's a double process you're just looking to add shine you can use the zero zero clear um, it has no AMP in it it has a pH of 4.5 and you can use it with or without activator so this could be your you know uh, sealing type of uh, step after after your color is finished then you have perfectly intensi intensity diluter which you actually mix with the demi color and this lightens and dilutes the color so if you're looking for more translucency or a lighter shade than we have in the demi you simply add the intensity diluter and you can create other shades um, but it is like the demi color without pigment so it does contain AMP but it also maintains the viscosity of the color um, so again it's designed to be mixed with the demi color to create lighter and more diluted um, shades we also have four intensifiers so if you're looking to brighten or subdue or intensify or subdue any of our demi colors you can mix these one of these four or a combination um, into your color formula but they can also be used alone so if you're looking on this pre lightened hair to create yellow orange or copper red or blue in the hair they can be used um, all by themselves so they're pure tone for ultimate creativity the demi is used to be mixed with demi color but they can also be mixed with activator alone and used on blonde or pre-lightened hair. So again, as I mentioned, processes 20 to 30 minutes with or without heat. Some different things you can do with it on natural pigmented blondes. Is, it's great for a first time color client, like I said, that wants to make a tonal change. It's also ideal for men who are starting to gray. So uh, because it will completely um, fade or wear from the hair without a demarcation line, it makes it an excellent option for men that are blonde that are looking for gray coverage. Uh, we also use our demi for color balancing which means refreshing the ends so color balancing both on single process on um, uh, high lift as well as for our toners and our color balancing with um, with a pre lightened hair again uses a toner or a glaze and then we also use our demi for repigmentizing 
Demi, um, other Demi usage options, we, we have a couple of different things, fun things that we can do with Demi. And one is called a Bricado Demi Double Shot, and the other is a Gray Coverage Double Shot. Um, the Demi Double Shot, if you're looking for a real intense strawberry blonde or gold, like kind of like you see in this picture, you know, you can use um, the Demi Double Shot. And what you do is you mix one and a half times your color. You put on your first application of two ounces of color and two ounces of activator. Process your 20 to 30 minutes, rinse, and then apply an additional um, ounce of color and ounce of activator um, a second time for 15 minutes and process that. So what you've done is you've done a double shot of color. So um, that's the way that you would do it, and you would get this nice, intense, you know, real gold shade that you're looking here at, at, on this picture. Uh, you can also use our Bricado Demi to create our Bricado Color Refresher. And our color refresher works as a color extender. It's completely customizable. It matches Bricado color. So, you know, whatever you're using for your toner, you mix up in a take home retail bottle and, you know, it, it matches. Their, their color and their toner stays from one visit to the next. It's completely predictable, deposit only. It's mixed with our constructor. So, it's actually a reconstructor as well. And it will not stain the hands or the skin or the scalp. What you do is you mix one ounce of Color Project Demi and four ounces of construct. For deep repair into the color refresher bottle that you see on the left. One is four ounces where you add your constructor and then one ounce um, where you add your color formula. So it's really, really easy. Cleanse the hair first with your appropriate Bricado shampoo. Um, mix your Bricado Color Refresher, shake well. Apply your color refresher, leave it in one to five minutes. So therefore, you can renew color by nature or color by choice. It's great for single process blondes uh, to help keep the tonality on the ends and keep the color. Um, double process blonding, you know, those, that, those toners tend to fade pretty quickly. So um, this is a way that you can renew and refresh the toner um, on a you know weekly basis. Uh, anytime you're looking for a tonal change, maybe someone is a golden blonde or they're an ash blonde and they want to see what it looks like to be gold or vice versa, you can actually use um, the color refresher um, to give you more of a tonal change to try on color. And then we also use it for color correction as well. So uh, correcting Bricado Beautiful Blondes, this can get a little bit involved. There's a lot of information here, but um, a couple of things that can actually go wrong. So color correction can seem overwhelming sometimes due to the fact that there's usually multiple issues within one head of hair. You can have new growth, um, the mid length and the ends can all have a different porosity, there might be different levels and different tones of color, um, but the key to any successful color correction service is the proper analysis of the desired result, making sure you know exactly what your end result the guest is looking for um, within a reasonable, you know, a reasonable result. Um, the condition and the porosity of the hair, and as I mentioned, a realistic expectation of what can and can't be achieved. So a couple of things that can, can go wrong are insufficient coverage. This is usually when we're talking about um, gray coverage. Um, but hair that's too light, hair that is too dark, or hair that is the wrong tone. One of the key places to start, of course, is always a proper analysis. When you're talking about, but making your proper analysis in the beginning will help you um, avoid pitfalls or situations later on down the road. So always make sure that when you're performing any color service that you properly identify the natural level you're starting with. And of course, this can be difficult um, when you're dealing with predominantly gray or white or hair that you know has multiple colors in it. But make sure that you're checking the hair for pigmented hair or you know to, to get an accurate starting level. Um, determine the exact level of the natural color. Do not guess. Use your natural level finder in the area with the least amount of you know gray or where you can find some pigment if there is any. And then make sure that you're leaving the color on the, the 
um, the appropriate processing time, not taking it off too early. So proper analysis of the hair, you want to always make sure that you're, you're identifying some of the issues that are going on. Accurate starting level, and you have to use our natural level finder for that. If you're dealing with gray, you need the true percentage of gray, you can't guess. And make sure you're always following the directions of processing time to make sure that you're leaving the product on long enough and not taking it off too soon, regardless of whether it's lightener, permanent color, high lift, or a toner or demi color will we'll really help um, you avoid situations that are unnecessary. Um, the first issue that happens is hair that's too dark. And when, when you hair that's too dark, you, you've got to remove the existing pigment. So you really have a couple options. You can use Bricado Cream Lights, as I mentioned, because it controls two to five levels. It stays where you put it. Um, so Bricado Cream Lights, and again, it's mixed one part cream lights to two parts. On scalp would be 10 or 20 volume. Off scalp, 10, 20, 30, or 40. Your other option is Bricado Lightning Shampoo, which is a scoop of powder lights blue, um, one ounce of constructor, and one ounce of 20 volume. And this will give you anywhere between one to two levels of lift. So if it's just a little bit too dark and you just need to bump it off a little bit, then um, the lightning shampoo can be you know, your optimum choice. You want to make sure that you don't over lighten. So make sure that you really stay on top of it and you watch it and you're getting to where you need to be. Because over lightening takes you into a whole, to actually takes you into the next slide. And then go back and apply your Target Bricado Color Project Demi Shade. Um, because it's going to be the most gentlest formula for you to go back and, and target to hit your target color. Hair that is too light, um, if the hair is two levels lighter than um, you're looking for, you, you need to repigmentize. And we repigmentize with Demi. The nice thing about repigmentizing with Bricado Demi is that there's no extra processing time and it'll actually ensure longer lasting or predictable results. So this is if you're two levels lighter. If you're only a level lighter, then obviously you can go in with your appropriate Bricado Demi and just you know put that on and, and process. Here is the Bricado Color Project repigmentation chart. So this tells you exactly what um, pigment is needed and what shade is needed. And the way you repigmentize is whenever you're going two levels darker is you're going to apply it to the lightened areas of hair. So if it's all over, if somebody is pre-lightened all over and you're going two levels darker, you would apply it from root to ends. If it's in highlights, you can go in and you can, or just the ends, you can apply it to just that area. But you mix the um, Bricado Demi color with equal parts water. You do not apply it with or mix it with the developer, or the activator, excuse me. You dab it on to the lightened areas of the hair only, and then you blot it. And then you go back over it with whatever your target Bricado Demi Shade or Bricado Permanent 10 Volume is. So you can do that in a foil or you can do that all over. Wrong tone. If the hair is too warm, too cool, or drab, um, if the hair has chlorine or mineral deposits, uh, what do you do with off-tone ends? Uh, what do you do and what causes um, hot regrowth? So the first one is hair is too warm. And usually when the hair is too warm, it has shades of red, orange, or yellow is a combination of these colors. So basically all you need to do is use Bricado Demi Color Wheel and then go to the complementary color and neutralize and control it. Just remember, especially dealing with blondes, is that when you use a cooler tone, that hair is going to look darker. So make sure that if it's, it's way too warm, then you need to go in and remove some of that excess pigment first. But if it's just a matter of toning just a slight amount, then just use the complementary color on the color wheel with Bricado Demi and use that as your toner and it'll fix the problem just like that. If it's too cool, meaning there's um, a base tone of like blue, green, or violet, the color grabbed and it's now too cool, you need to use the Bricado Gentle Lightning Shampoo to lift out some of, um, to lift out that coolness. And then again, you're going to go back in with Bricado Demi and um, tone it with your prop appropriate color choice. Chlorine or mineral deposits. The best way to handle chlorine and mineral deposits are used to use the Bricado um, Peppermint Scrub Ultra Scrub Treatment. And what this means is you take the hair dry, you put a little bit of peppermint scrub in a color bowl like you would hair color, but it's just peppermint scrub deep cleansing shampoo. Apply it with a bowl and brush to the areas of where the chlorine and the mineral deposits are, mist it with water, 
gently lather and pop them under a preheated dryer for 10 to 15 minutes and that usually will remove the majority of chlorine or mineral deposits. However, if you have somebody that has excessive chlorine or mineral deposits and the peppermint scrub did not get it all out, then you need to move to the Bricado Gentle Lightening Shampoo. And you use the shampoo, apply it again to those areas that are off tone, lift those deposits out, and then go back over it with um, Bricado Demi to tone, um, to even out the tonality of the hair. Off tone ends are usually a result of um, a higher level of porosity, usually due to chemical services, sometimes mechanical damage from blow dryers, curling irons, flat irons, and uh, the cuticle is, is usually a little bit more open, and so sometimes the hair will grab two cool tones and reject warmth. Uh, what you need to do, and, and the best way, is to go in and simply determine the Bricado Demi color shade with the base tone to neutralize that undesirable color. But if the off tone is extreme, you may need to do a color removal service of the Bricado Cream Lights or the Bricado um, Lightning Shampoo to lift off some of that old color, depending. Um, but usually, you can go in and just use your Demi shade and, and, and tone that right out of there. Um, hot regrowth. Um, hot regrowth, lighter results on warmth in the, in the new growth area or at the scalp is often a result of improper formulation when we're using permanent color. Either we used an insufficient amount of brown at the new growth or we use too much brown um, on the ends. And so it looks like the hair has created what we call hot roots. Um, so the best thing to do is choose the Ricardo Demi shade that will best balance the undesirable warmth. Apply it to the new growth only. You can process it anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. Just check it. As soon as it softened up that um, hot new growth, rinse, condition, and move on. So it's really an easy fix, so don't be afraid. Um, but usually it's due to improper formulation. And then lastly, some additional corrective situations or lines of demarcation and bands, ga gaps in application and bright spots. Just make sure like with lines of demarcation, you're carefully blending areas. Um, you need to lighten it if it's too dark or deepen it if it's too light. Um, gaps in application, just match the formula used throughout the rest of the hair and carefully reapply to those areas that were missed. And then bright spots or foils that have bled, you need to match the shade found on the rest of the hair. And again, Bricado Color Project Demi is ideal for this. Um, mixed with a little thickener, you just want to use Bricado Demi with activator and thickener. That way you can place it right on those areas um, that have bled so you can deepen them up. Okay, our recommended our recommended fade prevent regimen is Vibracolor. And here we are at 2.30. I just finished some of the technical information. We're, we just have a few more minutes and we're going to work through just a couple of more pieces of information and, and we'll be finished. Um, but our recommended um, fade prevention regimen is Bricado Vibracolor. And what it'll do is it'll extend the life and the brilliance of any hair color. It's paraben and sulfate free. Um, it has a color stability complex, protects it from the sun, and it also has a moisture complex, so it's improving the fiber of the hair. So the hair is in better condition. And we all know that hair that's in good condition um, holds color better and longer and looks more brilliant. So let's talk about some of our online resources. That was a lot of technical information. So be thank you guys for, for hanging out with me for, for all of that. I know that was quite a bit of information. Um, some of our BBN, our BBN online resources where you can get more information is um, one, we have our BricadoToday.com website. We also have our Facebook page and as Gary mentioned, we have um, you know Facebook pages that are, are designated to color. Here is what our Bricado um, website looks like. So um, once you get on, you know, create a username and a login, and then you initially you can get access to this first page of the site. Anybody that gets on our website can see these items that you see here. But once you put in your username and you become a member, then you can actually get to other areas of our site as well. So if you're looking for more in-depth information on our color, um, business tools, signage, or promotions, 
you can find all of that in our salon support page um, which is right up here and that takes you to a lot of this information uh, we also have um, two Facebook pages we have our Bricado Facebook page and then we have our Super Silk Facebook page and on either of these you can get more information as well about color, Bricado, see what's going on um, also with our Bricado um, Super Silk Facebook page we have a lot of before and afters and a lot of um, technical information that has been um, stored there we also have our Bricado YouTube channel as the Gary mentioned and we also have our um, beautiful business network which is our rewards program so again you're rewarded on quarterly purchases some of the items that you can use with the BBN are leaders, styling products, sample sizes, salon tools, and education. So you can give back to your business, you know, as far as um, based on your purchases and, and some business building opportunities. Um, also, I don't ever want to let anyone forget about our New York Academy. Our first one for 2013 is coming up at the end of April, April 28th and 29th. Uh, right now, it is you know one full day of color and one full day of cutting with Sam and his team. Tickets are four hundred and seventy-five dollars, or you can use your beautiful business network points um, as well for your ticket. So we have our first one coming up. We're very excited. So um, and April is a wonderful time out here on the East Coast and in New York City. Again, join us for our blonding techniques on Monday, April eighth going to be at 1 p.m. Central. This will be a BBN webinar, so it'll be a little bit shorter. It'll be closer between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Won't be quite as extensive as this one, um, but we will feature um, ombre and balayage information for you guys. And then also, I, I, I want to make sure that everyone knows that um, when you purchase Bricado Permanent Color, since we've been talking about lightning and lighteners, you actually get a free powder lights free with eight tubes of permanent color and a Bricado cream lights free with eight bottles of Demi. So make sure that you're taking advantage of our promotions that we have right now through February and March with the gift of lighteners as well. So it was just very appropriate for what we were talking about. So with that, um, I want to turn it over. I see that Sam is back and I know Gary is still on. So. Um, I, I, I finally got a chance to breathe. I know we had a lot of information um, that to was, cover. That was awesome, Michelle. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. We've had a great, a large number of questions that have popped up over the course of the uh, webinar that I've answered for people. Um, questions including, where's my distributor? Um, can I use color refresher at the back bar? Yes, you can. A couple of clarifications on lightning and highlighting. So it's, it's great information. We really appreciate you being here. And appreciate you spending the time with us. It's awesome to have you all. If you have any other questions, please type them uh, to us, or you could raise your hand and we could turn a mic on and you can ask the question verbally. So we'll stay on um, as long as you'd like answering questions and uh, continuing the conversation. But our webinar is officially over and we appreciate you being here and appreciate you being part of it. So thank you for your time today.